Howdy y'all. Welcome back to the channel. Lately, I've been hearing a lot of discussion over the purpose of the star forts that are founded all throughout the United States and the greater part of the world. Mind you, we are not even sure exactly who built these star forts. As with any given star fort in the United States especially, you can find evidence and claims for all different sorts of groups of people or societies, civilizations, uh, that claim the construction or the founding of said fort. Now, most interesting to me and substantially one of the most important discussions of old world context that we can have here is to the active and growing belief that these star forts served as more than mere defensive structures. And they may actually represent a time before recorded history, or rather a time when history had been substantially silenced. Now, these new age historians will make claims that these forts themselves may actually be harnessing a few different examples of what we call antiquitech. The geometric patterns of the forts, the layered designs, incorporating moats or water basins, and the concept of first leveling off the land is followed by only the construction of 10, 20, 30 foot thick retaining walls and sea walls, followed by more layers of additional walls that are equally thick or nearly as thick, all while we as history buffs are under the narrative guise we are being told that no more than a few hundred men were ever present to help construct these forts at any given time. Now, in many narratives, we're told that these forts were built on the fly as opposing groups quickly encroached upon whoever was claiming the said land the fort was built upon at that time. So for example, if you have the Spanish Empire that's in the southern United States and the British Empire is heading south, we're told that the Spanish Empire would quickly construct a star fort like this. And same thing in the areas that the French were occupying when the British would start coming towards their land, they would construct star forts like this. And at the same time, we're also told, at least in certain narratives, that the Native Americans that were here before any of the European occupation actually constructed their own star forts that were very similar to these as well. beautiful, symmetrical, many times impassable, with no roads or other ports of entry, usually built on a rocky coastline or overlooking flowing water, we are told that soldiers and not masons or architects, using only the tools that they brought with them, had the ability to build these uniformly designed forts in a matter of months and on rarer occasion, years. Now. I'm all for contemplating the current narrative as it sits in our history books. What I really find to be the most important aspect to this old world research, however, is to find different counter narratives which, officially published, seem to paint an opposing picture to what the current narrative has tried to make us believe. When we focus on the ancient and old world star forts, especially those of North America, for me, one thing comes to mind, that is, the Native American involvement in constructing or founding these forts. Many times, we're told these forts are built by the quote, Europeans, and then used to imprison the quote, Native peoples who rebelled against them. Amongst the slew of questions I have about that narrative, the most burning would be how many of these ancient forts are actually designed and or built by the ancient Native American cultures of America. How many predate these native cultures? In many of my old world series of videos previously, I've established with much evidence that numerous major cities in the United States, including Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, much of Connecticut, and if the Norumbega narrative is to be believed, much of the original 13 colonies were originally sprawling Native American cities, much like what we see in South American Aztec and Mayan sites.
what modern history will not tell us, but what history books from the 17 and 1800s will, is that these massive ancient cities of the native peoples, most of the time, were found buried below multiple feet of earth. The original Smithsonian texts from the 1840s, shortly after the Smithsonian's creation, for what seems to be exactly this purpose, states that some of the ancient mounds, as they are referred, are actually multiple mile long stone, clay, and brick built cities, many of which reside mainly buried and include intricate living quarters and underground passages from one mound to the next. In the 1840s and onward, we turned these ancient sites into golf courses. No, seriously, a large majority of the ancient Native American, quote, burial mounds and earthworks were repurposed into golf courses, parks, and most of the time, after the Smithsonian was done collecting artifacts, these sites became purposefully overgrown with an abundance of trees and shrubs being planted over these once sacred lands. Basically, they were covered up. The larger or more structurally sound of these ancient sites seem to be repurposed into more modern day cities. Take for example, Philadelphia, which the Lenape are said to have built out using intricate earthworks, developing roads or trails, which weaved around their ancient homes and mounds. Philadelphia history will tell us the Lenape used simple tools and their work was crude, but was livable. However, Lenape tradition and old world photographs of Philadelphia show the decimated Lenape lands of Fairmount Park, Philadelphia, which are full of what appear to be massive, almost pyramid-like stone blocks scattered throughout the quote, park. We also see stone and brick retaining walls in this Lenape land, which rise above the earth at certain portions and sink back below the earth at other portions. However, one can only imagine how large these initial structures in Fairmount Park really were before the European settlers arrived. Now, I make reference of that not only for the sheer ridiculousness of the current narrative giving little to no credit to the Lenape, but also because it gives credit to the new Swedish and British colonies as entirely building out this city. But I also want to mention this as a note of comparison, because across the state of Pennsylvania around this same time period in the 1700s, in Pittsburgh, we have the construction or founding of Fort Pitt. Now, Fort Pitt is a star fort, originally said to be built by a small number of French soldiers traveling downriver from previous French forts. The fort included a retaining wall, a sea wall, and all the amenities we can think of in the grandest old world defensive structures. The fort changed hands according to the current narrative, multiple times going from British to French to United States control. All of these groups claim to have, at one point or another, rebuilt the fort in their own image, leading to a debate that continues even today among scholars as to who really built Fort Pitt and the impossible walls that shaped the city of Pittsburgh. Discussed nowhere in the history of Star Fort Pitt is how the mound builders, the Hopewell cultures, flourished in the area of Pittsburgh for hundreds of years before the French arrived. The mound builders, as I've discussed in previous videos, not only built massive earthworks and defensive mounds, but they literally built their own star forts. The Hopewell culture is credited as building the largest stone mounds ever in Pennsylvania, and yet the narrative of Star Fort Pitt completely leaves out any notion 
that these Native Americans could have been involved in the construction of these massive star fort barracks. Now that brings me to the more esoteric or outstanding portion of the video. Whether you believe star forts are built by troops, built by masons, built by Native Americans, built by ancient advanced civilizations, or simply a gift from God. One argument that is gaining more traction is the idea of star forts as ancient power stations. While it appears all, or nearly all, parts of the United States actually had some sort of constructed infrastructure which seemed to predate the history that we are told today, these areas have developed unique ways to explain this. Star forts for defense, many remain, many more were built on top of, walled or reinforced cities with sea walls, built for safety, usually credited to the 1800s, there's never any construction photographs, they may actually be remnants of ancient native structures. Now, one puzzling aspect to how we apply these definitions to how these things were done is that these star forts, at least according to modern day fringe historians, appear to be machines or cogs to a larger gear, a form of antiquitech, if you enjoy that word, possibly linked to free energy or a sort of healing or protective process. Now, these theories abound about the star fort, the moats, could be cooling stations or aquifers used to conduct the current. The tower and dome, while defensive, may also serve as an antenna of sorts or a chamber to harness the energy or resonating sound. The underground layers and living quarters, literally hallways of healing or possibly areas where the free energy could be harnessed for experiments and conducted. All of these concepts are very fascinating and also very discouraging when we compare the theories with the actual history we are told about the star fort. Now, I also wanted to include a couple pages from some work done by Michelle Gibson, and you should definitely check out her YouTube channel. She gets in-depth in discussing these different let's call them monuments or different sites of importance that are found all throughout the United States of America and how they really seem to line up with this idea of ley lines. And it's very interesting. And if you look into it, it really does tie together with the star fort and the overall tetrahedron pattern that we see represented by many of these old star forts. Very interesting stuff. And I highly recommend you check out her work as well. So that is where I'm going to end with part one of this video. It's sort of just an introduction to star forts and a little bit of information about the different theories that abound about what these star forts really were. Now in the next part of this video and how I got into this specific topic is I want to look at Fort Marion, aka the Castillo de San Marcos, which is the oldest fort in the United States of America. This miraculous fort has survived, according to current narrative, for over 300 years through multiple bombardments, once containing the entire city of St. Augustine, Florida. So for the next part of the video or part two, we're going to be focusing specifically on St. Augustine, Florida and Castillo de San Marcos, the oldest fort in America. In part two, I'm going to include some really interesting excerpts and some of the narrative from the history books I found from the 17 and 1800s regarding this awesome fort. And they're very revealing and they certainly tell a lot, not only about the history of this fort and how it was made, but also about the entire area of Florida and how mysterious it really is. So hopefully you'll join me for that video. I thank you so much for being here. Leave any thoughts and comments down below and we'll talk very soon on this next video.